I'm Lisa Caddo. I'm here with the Archaeology Podcast Network at EAA in Glasgow. And today I have with me... Vina Oberlander from the Society of Antiquaries of Scotland. Great. And what do you do at the Society? My job is one of fellowship and recruitment. So basically I'm looking to encourage people to join the Society. We're the oldest antiquarian society in Scotland and we've got a remit for publications. I'm holding one of our beautiful publications here. We also encourage research grants. We have lectures and outreach program. So we're 230 years old. We've been around a long time. We do a very good job, but we need new members to kind of add to what we do. That's wonderful. No, that's great. So what would someone joining the society, what would they, how would they get involved with it or what kinds of things could they do in the society? Well, one of the things we do is our, our lecture program, which actually is open to anyone. You don't need to be a fellow. Our members are called fellows, a fellow of the society to, take, to come along and enjoy our lecture program. And we cover a whole range of um, topics. We, our interests are really antiquarian from prehistory right up to contemporary archaeology. And so people can come along to these events, network with other people, share interests. Our publications department actively publish um, books like the one I'm holding, but also internet, archaeological internet reports. So publication is a big part of what we do. There's also advocacy. We are an independent, charitable organisation, so we can actually talk on behalf of the sector, the historic sector in Scotland, um, on issues of concern to all of us. So that's another thing we can do. And just that whole thing of sharing a passion I think that's one of the real strengths of the society people join it because they want to be part of a community who care about Scotland's past to encourage scholarship support emerge, emerging research and so that's really what we're doing we're, we're there to be um, well, to, to carry on for the next 230 years delivering what our predecessors did <laughs> That's fantastic. So a lot of folks here are in Scotland for the first time and in Glasgow for the first time. What do you recommend people take advantage of or try to do while they're in this beautiful country and city? It's very, very hard because, you know, obviously I am Scottish. You can probably tell from my accent. I think I live in a very beautiful, rich country. There's so much to engage in, um, whether it's the urban landscape of Glasgow, which is a wonderful industrial city. And you just need to look up. The buildings in the centre are gorgeous. Don't look at your feet. Look up. Um, then it, as soon as you step outside Glasgow you're in this rich landscape whether you go north, south, east or west so I don't know how much time people at the conference are going to have but oh, if you could jump on a plane and go to Orkney I know that's the cliche but really it's beautiful or get yourself down to some of the beautiful border abbeys I was down there on Sunday, Dryborough Abbey, beautiful St Andrews where I went to university, fantastic I can't stop. I could keep going. <laughs> please do, please do. Tell us about all the beautiful places in this country. That's wonderful. Well, thank you so much for talking today. Thank you very much.